The Honourable Carl McGinn. I rise today to commend the Premier, Attorney General and the Parliament on the recent work towards achieving a more equal society for members of the LGBTQI plus community. As the first West Australian Prem Premier to march in the Perth Pride Parade, I believe the Premier should be commended not only on showing visible support to the LGBTQI plus community, but also taking positive, proactive action towards removing barriers and correcting historic wrongs. In November last year, the Premier and Attorney General introduced legislation to Parliament to implement a scheme for the expungement of convictions for historical homosexual sex offences. This bill was passed last night in the other place, which is a great achievement. I would also like to especially acknowledge Rainbow Labor for all their hard work advocating for this bill. I would like to take a minute to go over why this legislation is so important. Consensual homosexual activity was a criminal offence under various provisions of the Criminal Code Act 1913 for many years. The laws began to change in 1989 with the Law Reform Decriminalisation of Sodomy Act 1989, but really was fully decriminalised with the Act Amendment Lesbian and Gay Law Reform in 2002. Can I make that very clear? Homosexuality was only decriminalised in WA 16 years ago. It makes sense that we still have people, even people in their 30s, that have discriminatory convictions on their criminal records. These laws were used against the gay community to shame them. These was, this was the basis of much of the homophobia that is still around today. To have a law people could point to fueled their feelings of righteousness in discriminating against the community. There was so much shame, distress, and I acknowledge that not everyone affected by these laws and convictions is around to today to see the bill passed. And I too, and, and to have their criminal records cleared. Only time can heal these wounds. And I believe there is so much movement in this space, led by the Premier, we will look back at this government as one of the most progressive governments in this space. However, this is not only the legal barrier for equal recognition of LGBTQI people in WA. Since the bill was introduced last year, which was coupled with a public apology from the Premier, we have also seen excellent legislation introduced in the form of a Gender Reassignment Amendment Bill 2018. Before same-sex marriage was legalised, we had an issue in Western Australia with what has been dubbed the forced divorce law. This means that if one person in a heterosexual marriage transitioned genders to result in what we would see as a same-gender marriage, that couple would legally have to divorce to register the transgender person ac accurate gender on official state government forms. This has proven to many couples that this can be an unnecessarily draining and traumatic experience. The amendment will remove the current requirement that a recognition of gender certificate cannot be issued to a person who is married. This is huge for married people who want to be together regardless of their partner's gender. This also makes it easier for intersex people to register a gender that they identify with, regardless of what they are assigned at birth. Not only is this meaningful and important legislation for the trans community, but it also brings Australia in line with South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland and the ACT, who have already amended their laws uh, divorce laws, and importantly, it follows a landmark ruling from the United Nations Human Rights Commission in June. The UN ruled in favour of a trans woman from New South Wales who had unsuccessfully attempted to change the sex on her birth certificate. Once this amendment to our Western Australian laws take place, I will expect to see Tasmania and the Northern Territory make these changes as well, to bring them in line. With such major legislation changing for the LGBTIQ community, still happening, or only in our very recent history happening, it is no great surprise that this community experienced some of the worst mental health statistics in Australia. Young LGBTQI plus people are five times more likely to attempt suicide than the general population, and transgender adults are nearly 11 times more likely. Over a third of trans adults have attempted suicide at least once. We know LGBT QI plus people are twice as likely to be di diagnosed and treated for mental health disorders. I commend our Mental Health Minister, the Honourable Roger Cook, MLA, for providing more than half a million dollars of extra funding ahead of an extremely damaging pleb site that we've seen this last year. 
It also makes sense that we properly fund anti-bullying programs, particularly for our youngest West Australians. And that is why I fully support the Safe Schools program and encourage any schools not already signed up to the program to make this a priority. It is our responsibility as parliamentarians to serve our constituents, all our constituents. That means acknowledging the diversity of our communities, taking responsibility in educating ourselves about communities we don't understand or aren't a part of, and speaking up for injustice when we see it. Following three counts in the last two weeks of uneducated and dismissive comments by the new Prime Minister, Tony, uh, Malcolm, uh, Scott Morrison, <laughs> I'm happy for the silence. I am not happy for the silence to be accepted in response to discrimination. LGBTQI people continue to face this. I commend the Attorney General for the recent work and I urge this House to continue to support progressive legislation and amendments that support the LGBTQI plus community, in particular the mental health of the community. Thank you.